Hello. In this video, we will talk about simple linear regression using matrix notation. So if we remember from before introducing matrix notation, our simple linear regression looks like this. The ith response, yi, is equal to beta naught, our intercept, plus beta 1, times our, which is our slope, times xi. And then we have our error turn epsilon i. And the epsilons are assumed to be independent and identically distributed, normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Okay, so this was our simple linear regression written without any matrices, without any vectors. Now we're going to rewrite this with matrices and vectors. Okay, so we're going to first define a few things. We're going to define beta to be a vector with length two, so it has beta naught and beta one. And then we're going to define X to be our design matrix or model matrix. And the first row is the first observations data. So we have um, a one, which we'll talk about in a second, times the first observations um, X value. In the second row, we also have a one and then the second data points X value. And we just keep going down. We have ones in the whole first column and then the second column is all the X values. Okay, so if we look at beta, we said that this is a vector of length two. So it has two rows one column. And then x, we know that it has n columns, one for each observation, and we see it has two rows. So this is an n by two matrix. Okay, so if we look at x times beta, this is our expected value of y. So let's just uh, look at x times beta for a couple um, rows. So if we have x times beta, we have 1, 1, all the way down x1, x2, down to xn, and then we have times beta, which is beta naught, beta 1. OK, so we said that x is an n by 2 matrix. And we see that beta is a two by one matrix. So we know that multiplying n by two matrix by a two by one matrix should give us an n by one matrix, or in other words, a vector of length n. Okay, so if we go ahead and do our matrix multiplication, the first entry here is our first row of x times beta naught and beta one. So we have beta naught times one plus beta one times x one. And then now we go to our second row, we multiply this row by this whole column here. And so we get beta naught times one plus beta one times x two. And then we just keep going down. So then we get beta naught plus beta one x n. So here's our expected value of y. And we can see that makes sense from what we know before because we had yi equals beta naught plus beta one xi plus epsilon i. So we knew that the expected value of this is equal to beta naught plus beta one xi plus the expected value of epsilon i, which is zero. So this and this matrix here are matching up. OK, so that's our expected value of y. And um, we can then write our regression equation two ways. We can either write, OK, expected value of y equals x beta, or we can write y equals x beta plus epsilon, where epsilon is an n by 1 vector, n by 1 matrix. So epsilon is n by 1 x is n by 2, beta is 2 by 1, 
and y is n by one. Okay, so here are two um, analogous ways to write our regression equation here. Okay, if we want to write the epsilon, the distribution of epsilon, we know from before that the epsilon i's are iid normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Now, if we want to write this in matrix notation, then epsilon is our vector, it's our n by one vector. And it has a normal distribution, a multivariate normal now. And we have the zero vector. So this is a vector with all zeros in it. And its length is n. And then here we'll have sigma squared times the identity matrix of dimension n. Okay, so if we look at sigma squared times the identity, then that means we have sigma squared, then zeros for the covariances. This first entry here represents the variance of epsilon i. This entry right here represents the covariance of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. This represents the covariance of epsilon 1 and epsilon 3. This represents the covariance of epsilon 1 and epsilon 4. And since these epsilons are independent, then we have zeros on the off diagonal. Because the epsilons are independent, then their covariance must be zero. Then on our diagonal, we have sigma squared because this first entry represents the variance of epsilon one. This second entry represents the variance of epsilon two and so on. So we have zeros on the off diagonal and sigma squareds on the diagonal. Okay, now let's talk about how to estimate beta. We're going to estimate beta with B. So remember beta is n by one and B is also going to be n by one. And little b is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y. So this is our way of calculating b0 and b1. In other words, our intercept and slope for our regression equation. 